when I moved into the neighborhood in 2000, I was so thrilled that the ravine existed. And my first experience though was that it was full of garbage. So I went to a lot of ravine cleanups with the local cleanup group and then quite quickly got the idea that if we started doing art in and around the ravine, maybe people would change their attitude towards it and there wouldn't be as much garbage thrown in. So that when we formed Still Moon Art Society, it became a three-pronged initiative of art, environment, and community engagement. So we try and make all our projects do that so that people change their attitude towards nature, of it being a place of sacredness and beauty, both for the animals but also for us to enjoy. The ravine is our anchoring um, piece for everything we do, but then having these structures on the edges of the ravine, like the Dye Guard and the Alder Eco Arts Hub as our physical meeting space where you can go in the pouring rain and you're not going to get cold and store all our dye materials. And the labyrinth really gives us, the, it, it, they're all different assets of, and different ways that we can use the, the ravine and engage with community. Um, so before the pandemic, we used to do a lot of community engaged projects where we had lots of people coming together. Specifically the Moon Festival, we would have thousands of people here in the ravine, not this wild part, but down in Renfrew Park area. And um, we would have 200 youth that would volunteer every year to help us put on the festival. And then we'd have like 100 artists helping, and then we'd have thousands of community members joining in the harvest fair and the parade portion and then the lantern installations and a big finale that the youth would produce at the end. We started doing that in 2003 but ever since then we've been adding other activities so now we have a lot of spring activities where we're doing garden work and ravine stewardship work and um, we've started a Color Me Local Dye Garden and we've always had special youth programs, so we've done special youth projects in the ravine or near the ravine. So we've done um, youth and artist mentor performance projects right here, actually, with youth dancing in the creek and us dancing in the creek and climbing the trees and then having that be part of a site-specific performance. So we did all sorts of those kinds of things. But then uh, when the pandemic hit, all of a sudden we had to reassess everything. Oh, the pandemic really pulled a toll on like my mental health, especially, um, I would say the youth committee because everything went online. And you know how usually youth committee meetings, they're all in person and it's a time for you to get to know everybody. I did not know the whole team and it was just a really, really big struggle, especially when planning events online. Last year I did have, uh, I think a lot of fun working for Still Moon and helping them kind of shift their programs online during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, and I totally agree. And I just think that, you know, I, f I found a lot of pride in doing that work of making sure that the programs were accessible for everyone by, you know, putting them online. It was pretty hard, partly because we were, um, we we're in the process, Still Moon was in a growth phase where we we're in the process of hiring new staff and bringing on new people. And here we are bringing on new people and we don't know what we can do, if anything. And so I'm training new staff for an organization where we've spent a whole year and a half with new staff and nobody has ever seen a normal still moon year. This place just brings back a lot of memories. I don't know, I remember when my sister and then my cousins, they all like came here, they were planning the still moon and that's how I got involved and then I met you and then it was just, yeah. Yeah. What we found is those youth have grown up in the organization. So they start volunteering for us in like grade eight, grade nine, grade 10, and then by grade 11, they're in a leadership position. And many of those youth have gone on to be our summer students or be on our board. So we have had this mentorship role. I started attending the Moon Festival and everything um, when I was like in grade four, like, yeah, <laughs> had a a, I've had a long legacy with it. Um, but I started joining because I actually saw my sister, like you worked with her, Cindy. Yeah. yeah, she joined and then I saw what she did. She always looked so busy. And when I was younger, I always wanted, it sounds so weird, but I've, I've always wanted to be that busy as well. I wanted to know that like, oh, somewhere needs me. Like, oh, I can do this. Like, 
somewhere out there I can contribute to the community and also just kind of be like, people are looking at me and they're like, wow, I kind of want to be like that one day. Yeah, it feels yeah. like you're doing something really important, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So the Moon Festival has been a great thing for us because so many youth help us and then they bring it home to their families because I can't possibly speak all the languages that are spoken in this neighborhood, but the kids bring that out and then the families. So it, it, that's been kind of a bonus and, that, and so many people have discovered this park that never used to discover this park. So many people have discovered the dye garden that never discovered it before. And we had a really great local participation in the Moon Festival, too. I felt that when I actually got to this Moon Fest event, it really helped me kind of, like, re immerse myself back into the natural surroundings. Yeah, totally. And I really think that, like, all the art that's incorporated into it, it really helps bring the community together. The way we have begun living with all our technological advances, it becomes quite easy to have your community be a virtual community, a digital community. And there becomes less and less incentive to know your neighbors or to be uh, attached to your neighborhood even. So um, if we can make a way for people to feel physically attached to their physical neighborhood, I actually think um, that it reduces the sense of alienation and increases the sense of belonging. I think if we just did like straight stewardship events or straight crafts, then I don't know what we're doing that's any different than a community center. And I think, and programs is one thing, but then having art projects where we're thinking more deeply about it and trying to get other layers of meaning into it so that we're transferring more than just specific skills. We're, trans we're engaging with the community to come up with a shared meaning together and a shared vision about a world that we could be inhabiting together. So having that art focus allows you to ask those deeper questions.